they've uh, actually in the back of the Suburban in the cooler on the top there's two waters inside the cooler it's filled with vodka yes <laughs> sweet <laughs> okay, so I know it's your first time in a balloon. Yep. So, uh, just a real quick briefing on what you uh, can hold on to in flight. Uh, you can feel free to hold on to the top of the tanks like that. You can hold on to the uprights, hold on to these handles. Um, what you don't need to be doing is any of the black lines here, uh, any of my control lines. Uh, those are for me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when we come in for a landing, uh, we'll practice this real quick. I think we'll have you stand sideways here. Okay. And uh, you can either wrap an arm around the balloon like that and hold okay. on to the tank or something like that. Just okay. hold on to two things at once and uh, make sure you bend your knees when you come in. It's kind of like skiing. Um, and then that's good for now. When we get there, I'll tell you when to get into position and okay. see if there's any medical issues I should know about right now? Back nope. back or anything like that? I'm good. Sweet. Okay. Get Phil in here. get you to check my traffic. I see one balloon over there, okay. but I don't know where the other one is. Oh, yeah. So as we leave, yep. I would like you to practice leaving very, very low. Okay. Um, so rather than going out hot, we've got yep. a lot of running room. What I'd like to do is just creep out as shallow as you feel comfortable. Okay, sounds good. All right. You can do it, baby. Whoa, no, no, the baby. Oh, no. Not half run like this before. Uh. All Thank you guys, appreciate the help.
see people coming out of tie-off situations, even in calm ones, and they'll just shoot out. Right. Which, in a rally situation, is particularly dangerous because you don't really know who's coming over the top of you. Right. But, I mean, if I'm being honest, I'm guilty of that, particularly right. with the tie-off. It's easy to do. And, uh, you know, with just me in the basket, uh, I'm light, right. you know. And then with the tie-off, it, it gives you a sense of weight on the basket. Right. And so I get it, you know, going. And uh, and I think, okay, I'm, I'm ready. And then I actually let tie-off go, and it's like somebody took a whole person out. Right. And then, you know, with just a little bit of a breeze, and I'm like watching out for the false lift, and suddenly I'm... Yeah, 400 feet a minute. Exactly. Okay, what's your flight plan today? Alright, well unfortunately the uh, reservoir is off limits these days. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, zero find error, turn right heading 060. I'll probably right, get zero, up into that. Zero, 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 zero. South layer is still there a little bit. Okay. We've got lots of east it seems like. And I'm going to try and shoot for south of foreign trade zones. Okay. That area. And, and do we think, how high do you think you have to get to go north? Uh, well, from the pie ball, I, I, you know, slowed down, it seemed like. Um, maybe 1,500, 2,000 feet, somewhere okay. in there. Gotcha. Uh, according to the rocks, I need to get up around 2,000 or more. Get that? Yeah. Um... So why don't you go ahead and call the airport, and then I'm going to actually call them back when you're done and have a chat with them real quick. Uh, and then I'm debating about, since that upper level wind is so calm, I'm debating about today climbing up there and doing a terminal. Okay. What would good. you think about that? I think that we need to check that okay. out. Okay. Yeah, why don't you call the airport and we'll chat with them and then we'll go from there. Tower. This is Hot Air Balloon, November 74008. Uh, third of three balloons, colors are orange and yellow today. Copy that, thank you. Landing. Okay. Springs Tower, Hot Air 74008. Uh, can we uh, get an example of a light signal today for some training? Hot Air 008, uh, sure. Let's give me a minute. Copy that. Thanks so much. Very rarely do students have an opportunity to actually see a light signal. So in theory, what's happening is he, oh, you see it? I do, yep. And so you should, it, basically it's him holding a light gun and he's shining it right at us. Right. Springs Tower 74008, saw a white light, thank you. So then, when they flash white light, green light, or red light, it means something different. Sure. In the grand scheme of things, the only thing you're going to see in a balloon is uh, 
Again, of course, you're not going to be in an environment where you don't have an aircraft radio because you're smarter than that. But they could, they could end up giving you a red light, which would basically say, just, just get out of here. Um, much more, what is more likely is that they'll give you a flashing green, red, green, red, green, red. And that basically basically just means use caution. So, okay, so here's what I propose. We're currently at 60. We need to get a, just a little bit of a right turn, but I'm looking up here at, uh, at Brook, and he's going back north. So let's do this. Uh, let's set up a climb, and let's do, um, an, unless something changes, let's do 400 feet a minute up to 9,000. Class Charlie airspace. Uh, what are the entry requirements for Class Charlie? Entry requirements. Oh, uh, well one is communicating with the tower. Okay. Uh, um, Chase, I don't think that's enough for, uh, for me to get out to, to the north here, so I'm going to probably be on the south. Change Down uh, on the south end. Normally, you have to have a transponder okay. to enter Class C. But we have the waiver, the yearly written waiver. Uh, and then you have all the visibility requirements. So during your check ride, it is totally acceptable to turn your radio off, right? and and I would recommend it. Sure. And then you know I think managing the crew via the radio is a valid part of the check ride. It's not in the test standard, so there's no need to demonstrate it. But especially if we go with the assumption you're going to have some some of your friends like Phil or Travis or whomever, um, I would just turn it off. And then if you feel like the flight's going really well and you're coming in for a landing, turn it on and call it. Sure. If not, fuck it. Just land and... And, uh, you know, just to minimize the number of distractions. Oh, what happened? No envelope temperature? So the chrono is flashing to say that we turned it on I see. at some point, but I yeah. okay. and it's pretty close, 229 right. and 228. Right. I think we call that within a margin of error. <laughs> so in part 61, it says that we're supposed to climb to an altitude, have a controlled ascent. Do you remember what that altitude is? I, I don't either. I think it's 2,000 feet. I see. 
Um, today we're gonna go well beyond that. So let's keep climbing all the way up to nine. Part of my motivation to go to nine is, I, there's two. One is because I think this, this north will actually gradually turn more towards the east. And so it'll just get us out in the open spots. Um, but also, um, 9,000, I think we could call 3,000 feet AGL, which is a nice round number, which I know exceeds the requirement. And 3,000 feet is more than enough to experience a terminal. So that's the kind of thing it's a good decision but say it out loud you know hey I'm I'm gonna slow down a little bit watch this temperature see if it stabilizes as opposed to I wasn't paying attention right because you're paying attention to something extra and verbalizing that goes a long way right. Expect to see a 300 up here. I mean, it's only three knots, but okay. still. Hancock on the other side of Memorial Park is five miles from the airport. Okay. It's exactly where the five mile ring ends. And so if you're in this situation, you say, man, what is our visibility? Well, I can see the park. I can see the freeway. That's six miles. I can see that. So I got, I got, I got a solid six, maybe 10, depending on your attitude about what visibility means. Right. think about this display. I like it. It's really crisp, isn't it? Yes, that's for sure. There are some settings, but I think the settings primarily change Doctor like units or where you get audible yeah. alarms. I don't think there's any layout settings, I think. As I did this when I was in Pagosa, I flew both instruments oh, and compared them. And versus your signal. Right. I haven't heard of anybody that has the balloon fours yet. Not in the US. That'll be the next experiment, right? Okay, look at that. headed north northeast at five minutes. One of the things I talked to Dave is about, about is I'd love it if those two numbers were swapped visually. Right. You know it's a zero one zero at five is much more common than five at you know so Take out. Press 
say if I start doing it to the tank, we may mm -hmm. take out some water. Okay. But that's certainly a much more manageable. Yeah, you're not going to step on it in normal right. conditions. If you're venting, it'll still be around yeah. your feet. So in that case, did you start decreasing the ascent rate with the thought of leveling out, or did it just sort of, did you fall asleep at the wheel? Yeah, that's, either way is no big deal. Um, the challenge in this case, and a good rule of thumb is your rate of ascent, when you stop that rate of ascent and let it start to just sort of mellow out, is that number of feet from the goal. Okay. And so at this point, we're probably going to go past it a little bit, but not by much. Because you're seeing, I mean, now we got we got 50 feet, but 100 feet. Right. Now we got 50 feet and 90 feet. So I, I think you're going to go pretty darn close to it. That's five zero uniform contact departure. Yeah. Yeah, five. Now we've got a nice track, 10 knots at 30 degrees. This is what Brooke talked about. I love that direction. It smells smoky. Okay, so from a, from a standards standpoint, if you said, okay, I'm done, you hit within 100 feet, and you were plus or minus 100 feet of the 400 almost the whole time. Right. And so that would be totally fine. Look at that, look at that! Couldn't have planned that one better, could no. you? <laughs> okay, so let's talk about a terminal velocity descent. It's a horrible name, but... Um, the premise of a terminal, in terms of training, is to learn two things. One is to... to kind of simulate the experience of your burner going out. Right. Whether you lost a pilot in a wind shear, whether you were running on an empty tank, whether your burn was too... It does, yeah. Um, I just taste it. Um, the other scenario that, that is, I'll say, likely, although it never happens, to create a pilot light outage is that you shut shut it down because you've got a fuel leak. Right. You know, you've got a fuel leak and so maybe you bleed everything out and then you deal with it. And um, so it's to simulate that concept and the idea there is, okay, we're simulating that, but the, the the intention of doing a terminal is to feel what the balloon does if it takes you a really long time to recover. Um, because you can go down, as we know, four, five, six hundred feet a minute and almost never notice it. Right? Which is weird in itself, right? Um, but once you get up, I'm, I've done a terminal in this balloon and I think it starts to react around 800. And so when I say react, I would anticipate a couple of That's different things. Turn right heading towards your uh, the first thing I would anticipate course, is that we'll spin. Now, not super fast, but you'll just get a sort of a steady rotation, right. uh, which can be very disorienting, three, four, especially three, if you're down here fucking three, around in the corner and then you look, left. wait a minute, what? Right. That can be very disorienting um, if you're just sort of messing with it. The second thing that it would ha five, that will five, happen five, is as the balloon gets cold and we've been falling for a while, you'll start to see some dishing and the throat will close up. Now, this balloon, this throat is massive. It's not ever gonna close. Um, but it is important to note that when we let the balloon get cold, anytime we go through a shear, you're gonna get a fairly significant dishing because you don't have pressure in the balloon to keep it warm. Does that make sense? Um, so we've got the spinning, we've got sort of the...
time those two things and you'll end up with sort of a pendulum, sort of a swing shake kind of a maneuver. What do you think about climbing up to 10? Sounds good. Let's do that. Um, I anticipate sort of this 030 to hold. And then what I was thinking about timing and positioning is that if we climb up to 10 and we're still headed this direction, once we get sort of off the base, um, then we can drop down, say, over the golf course, that open space, the neighborhood, and then I think we'll sort of get a, a southeast, and that might take us to the Space Village field, could take us to the missing house, um, could be, you know, even in that little triangle field. Could be the other thing I'm watching is that I want to make sure that we get an hour, which will be easy. We went hot at 7.16, so that's no problem. By the way, today is the terminal velocity. I have no intentions of actually shutting off the burners. We just won't. Um, but we'll pay attention to make sure that the pilot stays lit. It probably will. I mean, I would say 90% confidence. I will. Right. I did have it blow out on me twice uh, the last flight. Oh, really? About right here, actually. Okay. Uh, but we had started way up north. Okay. And uh, this is where I was climbing through, and about around around 10,000 is where I was going from 0.5 ish to about eight. Uh huh. Pretty quickly. Right. And as I went through that shear, it blew it out. Okay. And. didn't notice it the first time until I went right that's usually when you notice right. it and because it's really the first time I'd ever experienced that mm -hmm. uh, I didn't immediately think the pilot is out okay and so the first thing I did was to look around and I was like right. well what's okay, no, we have a leak hissing. somewhere yeah, yeah. and then I was like oh right and so then I clicked it it came back on no problem. And then as I descended through that from seven, eight miles an hour right. back down to one right. ish, blew out again. Okay. At that time I knew what had happened, right. so I immediately kicked <laughs> it back on. Yeah, and that's why I'll say speed, although, you know, it can take seconds and it doesn't matter. Speed relighting is valuable because by the time you realize it's out, you want it to burn. Right. And right. Uh, right. maybe you really wanted to burn, maybe you just kind of wanted to, but right. either way, you're not where you wanted to be right then. Right.
So I'm looking at these two guys here and they are almost stopped. Like I, I can't see the colors unfortunately, but I think this is Troy, the orange one in the middle maybe. And he's been in that square for a long time. So I think we're overall gonna have a pretty calm experience once we get down. One of the things that we might wanna take I'll say concern about is I don't want to go down and then head back into the base and have to and have to burn all that fuel to get back up into this layer, you know. Smoke gonna last, Scott. They said two days ago they said it was gonna be clear by this morning, but yesterday they said it'd be around for another couple days. So. It's not good. Personally, just from our experience, visibility's bad. I don't like the air quality, but. But it's really more about how... To me, that means that those fires are still burning and they're just crazy out of control, you know? What's your point, six? Thank you. Chances are, Barbara would just take her word for it, but sure. Certainly no harm in Oh yeah, I have that right here. Thousand feet doesn't really feel that high to me. But the ground's only 4,000 feet below us, so yeah. If we were 10,000 feet above the ground, it would feel yes. high, I promise. Yes. And I think the smoke somehow affects it. It's it's not as visible that how high right. we are, you know. says it's getting worse um, let's see just for posterity let's go ahead and bump that up so that we actually see 10,000 and we'll say that way we can say that we really did it right right Right. 
Because it used to be that there was a on auto. auto and, yeah. And, Okay, so when do you suppose we should start our descent? If we drop down, we're going to get out this direction. It's only six knots. Hard to know what we're going to get on the way down. Right. So my feeling is, if we drop down now, if we really <laughs> aggressively, then that's not quite 270. Right. But we could be in this triangle, which we think is accessible. Um, Alternatively, we still got nine knots. We could go up and sort of line up on that that intersection there, whatever that is. We've got another 20 minutes that we have to be hot, but that's I think that's easy. Drift down and then turn that way, we can kind of in that area. I haven't landed in those fields off of the off of the Mark Sheffel and whatever the neighborhood roads is, but uh, I'm okay. What do you think? Okay, so we're we're pretty level at 10,000 feet. So what I suggest we do is we stop burning. Uh, actually, let me call the airport. Springs Tower, Hot Air 74008, uh, gonna descend between the parallels. Hot Air 7408, that. That way there, not surprised. Okay, so. 35 left, perfect. Okay, so. You know, five, five, ten, three, five, so at this point, three. what I suggest we do is nothing, and let's just pay close attention to how the balloon behaves at different rates of descent. Um, you will find that you have a temptation to burn and recover probably earlier than you really need to. With this balloon, this tank's empty. These three are roughly full, right? Um, I know I should put some fuel on this. So 600 feet a minute, that comes fast. And 600 feet a minute feels like, uh, I can feel it in my ears, but the balloon is good, solid. Now we're at 630. And here's the spin. Yeah. You comfortable? So far, okay. I don't anticipate it being very dramatic, but... 700 feet a minute. Ground's becoming more in clear view. Mental note, the pilot light is still lit. Now you can start to feel us coming through a shear. Balloon is continuing to rotate. Now you feel that cool air all of a sudden. That's actually because the balloon is now leaking cooler air, and so it's not gonna be as warm. Now you can start to see dishing in the scoop and a little bit up the throat there. Yep. Okay, still quite a bit of spin, 700 feet a minute. We still got a lot of elevation to work with. It is important though, when we choose to recover, that we wanna be looking up like we're in landing mode because maybe the throat's dished in or something like that. Fan is disconcerting, isn't it? And here's the swing. So at 8,800, we start to pick up that shear. Now we've got a little bit of the rocking motion. Um, I've done this a hundred times, and I'm still holding on. That's 
looks like. I, I hate it, but you can hear the balloon creak. Now we're getting the rotation and the wobble effect, um, sort of the wobbling top effect. Notice that we've slowed down. And now we're going to speed up again. I think it's because we came into a cooler air. But the balloon is still cooling, right? I mean, it's 166. So we know we got 60 degrees to recover in the balloon. Okay, we're at 83. 800 up feet. 800 feet a minute seems to be about our max today, doesn't it? We're pretty likely to do that. Okay, there's 870. Aha, we just hit that warmer air. There's 900. Now we spin the other way, which is weird, disconcerting. You felt that all of a sudden counter rotation. Don't know why that happens. That's 950. I'm curious if we'll get to a thousand. I don't think we will. Yeah, feeling that nervousness, like holy shit, I wish I could burn. Um, so imagine that you're that you had a fuel leak that you're working, and but I am confident. We're still good. We've got 1,600 feet. Okay, I think that's fast as we're going to go. You can recover at whatever rate you want. So that took us about 600 feet, from 900 feet a minute to a dead stop. That's not much. And you still got, you know, eight, 900 feet to spare. And we're going west. That's surprising to me. Man, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm glad I did that with you and not with Bertie. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a terminal. And it can get more crazy than that if you're heavy, if you're more heavily loaded. Um, Aaron and I and one passenger got this balloon up to just over a thousand feet, like 1050. Um, but it never got unstable. It never closed up the throat, anything like that. The other thing you really have to watch out for is just shears on the way down, because then you get a little bit more of that rock, and it just makes you nervous. And um, so think about the duration there. We had a lot of time to solve a fuel problem. We right. had a lot of time to get that burner lit. We had a lot of time to change tanks, fuck it, open everything up, you know, whatever the case might be. And so that's the simulation. And the idea there is that we're, we just had a fuel leak or a pilot light outage and we could have spent three, four minutes solving the problem. Right. And, and then, the thing that always surprises me is it feels like, oh man, the ground's coming up fast. God, wish I had triple burners. But 600 feet isn't a lot to isn't a lot to take. It doesn't take a lot to recover. I wasn't on it the whole time. No, which I it is good because it allows the balloon to to breathe. Because right. you notice when you were on it, it gets real squishy because right. the balloon's not mixing enough. Okay, I can't see the guys anymore. And that says either that it's just so hazy I can't see them, or oh, they're, down. they're down. So, um, we did light signals, we've done terminal, um, we did an ascent, we did level flight, we ascended to 10,000 feet, 4,000 feet AGL. Um, and so, hit everything on my agenda so what I would like you to do is sort of just plan out the rest of the flight and uh, just kind of walk me through what your thinking is and uh, talk me into a landing 
I didn't. I expected us to go west based on the airport comment, but I figured the south was dying because those guys were so calm. But I had anticipated as we came down, we'd go that way, not this way. Just spit. It sort of curved around this way, and but everything's really slow. Yeah, because my spit didn't turn around much, and if it did, it was right at the deck. T3, Spring Tire, and uh, what, what touch you go, and what's your foot touch at? Yeah. I'll show you two, three, two, three, about three, five left. If we turn to the right, we got this stuff. If we're straight, we got parking lots, which doesn't look like we've got a lot of light poles and stuff. Those might be good, might not. Um, if we get a lift, obviously we've got some open industrial stuff here. We've got these fields, so we've got that park looks nice. I don't know what park that is. I think on the ground it's going to be very slow. And from a timing standpoint, you're clear to land whenever you want. We've met our hour. So I would say just take whatever makes you. Still saying 3:30. I wonder if it's there. I do see power lines along powers to some extent on both sides, but I'm not confident about this side.
out this direction I don't see much tall stuff like I see this cell tower here and the cell tower there but I don't see anything higher than those Power lines. Well, I guess the cell tower is inside the tower. Probably, yeah. They're about the same, I guess. substation here so power lines could be coming sort of any direction out of that. I'm not Winds feeling a turn. Yeah. You know, we only got 300 feet to go, but I'm not. I'm not sensing a turn. Something to be cautious of is I see what looks like a, a horse stable over here, and oh, yeah. just a lot of little power lines in here. So I think this triangle, and I I want to say this is Palmer Park, but I'm not sure about that. From here to the to the hill and along this open space, I think this triangle is is not city. I think it's county land. Um, Okay, so we're more likely to see larger open fields, but we're also more likely to see small power lines that haven't been underground, horses, any of those sorts of things. in this stable appear to be very calm so far. face I think as we continue to drop down I think we'll get a little bit of a turn what do you think we're into the spit yeah those horses could care less right
that's fun. So in this kind of environment, there's obviously not a lot of what I would call ideal destinations out right. here. And so typically, I think that as we drop down, I think we'll get a left turn. So I'm generally focusing my view out here, although of course things could change. Sure. Um, and, and in general, my approach when we do that is that I would look for sort of staying right at treetop power line height, and then you'll sort of see it, and as soon as you see it, you take it, kind of a deal. Right. You know, and it might be things like, hey, this, you know, oh, this field looks good, or we're approaching this road, or, you know, and uh, you just kind of have to be ready and then be willing to take it. And this is where that really nice control and uh, sort of level flight as we descend in here is, is really helpful. I kind of like this wilderness, wildernessy looking area over here. Um, I think we might get a little bit more left turn than that, but maybe even on the red barn area. feeling that whisper in my face that just feels like, oh, we're, we're going to turn, we're going to slow down. got to resist the temptation to overburn and stay too high because that really makes the landing much more difficult. So things like this property here doesn't look attractive because we've got this power line. But there's actually a fair bit of sort of open depending on what direction we're going and things like that. So. see any along the road so if we cross the power lines by the greenhouse we might be able to get in the trees the jeep the house that looks like a pretty open area over there actually
gradually turning more and more a little bit, you know. bumping up a little bit which I actually think is a good thing because if we get a little bit of that east that was let's say it's still there who knows right. then we get bumped over those lines and can come in a little bit better fills there think about coming into this road over here. You see these power lines to the house? Mm -hmm. Doesn't look too bad for me. There's drivable access if we stay focused, but we've got the power line right behind us here. Okay, we're shifting back that way. Right right. But if we go this way, then that's easy.
like to see you have your red line in your hand just in case. In case you see something you love and you decide to take it real quick. So many trees around town are looking sort of straggly like this. That east wind the airport told us was here. particularly motivated, I think you would have sit there. But Sorry, Phil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in an emergency situation like super low on fuel, in the in the paved street would be okay. Right. There's not a tremendous amount of traffic. It is! Hey! You have a lot of trees though. So there's cold stack back here if we get that hard left. Some of these paved streets are pretty big. And we're cruising into more open space. She's a lady from church. Oh yeah. Used to uh be heavily involved with the uh, high school kids and stuff like that. On fuel. Uh, we are almost done with this side. And then okay. About full and both side. both of these are full. Okay. This is pretty much because we played a little bit off this one. Okay. Well, I played it off this one. So. Gotcha. from the pole to that house, but I don't know what goes, if anything goes to the White House. I see a power junction from the other side of the house, so maybe between the power line and the house will be open. Maybe if we get more of a right turn to go to the road, maybe we just keep flying. ends at that second that pole. pole. Yeah, it looks like it goes to the ground. It looks 
Pinkham. Stick it down in between a one one house block size of not power lines. Sure. Yeah, and the, the disadvantage of more speed is you need more space, but the advantage is we're yeah, going to keep cruising. Yeah. Right. So this fuel below us would have been. I'd say marginally safe. I think coming in between these dead trees and sticking it in the road would have been okay. Yeah. Um, but four. and I'm not suggesting that you should have. I'm just right. saying those are options to been. keep in mind yeah. visually. Isn't it amazing in this environment how fast four knots feels? Yes. It's like, oh man, well, we're moving. Right. <laughs> Probably gonna cruise out to the the road here. Mm -hmm. so, I know the chasers to do a sunrise. We're probably gonna head back out toward uh, whatever the main road is there. Powers or Academy or Chamber of Powers. Copy that. <laughs> oh, great! What did he say? Better than Labor Day. I'll take that. Yeah. You bet. So looking out, I see some pretty major power lines here. Yeah. Four powers, I think it's on this side. I see sort of an open field to the right hand side of the flag. I see what looks almost like a really big driveway or something on the left hand side of the flag. Um, this is powers. 
But this is that new storage area. That's Gunther Tootie's down there. That's the traffic in this long driveway. If that is a tractor. Perpetually backwards basket, right? Access to this side of the fence is easy. This side looks less easy, but there's a truck right there in sort of the scrubby stuff. And if we continue this direction, that road over there on the leading edge of the golf course, I think is good. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they want us on the golf course. Yeah. Well, if we had maintained the direction we were going, we still would have been right. So we sort of got a bit of a left turn. Hard to figure out which way to focus here. Thank you. 